Okay, so uh, let's go through a couple of basic commands to be used with Git version control and Bitbucket repositories for our course. This is gonna be only a short, just the basics tutorial, but hope this helps to get things going along. I expect that you have already installed your version of Git. Some configuration that you might want to do or need to do is to set up your username, email address and possibly other settings you wish to do. Almost every command will begin with git. Then we want to config and make it a global variable so that regardless of which repository, which directory you are using, this will affect those edits. The variable we need to change is user.name and then just type your name. There we go. In the same vein, the email address git config global user email. And I personally find the default editor that Git uses to be somewhat unintuitive for beginners, so I usually change it to something else. So git config global core dot editor none. Then we have uh, edited what we need to. Let's get a repository going. You can do it either by giving the command git in it, but since I already have one pre-prepared, I will just clone the existing one. And then I need to type in the address where that repository is residing at the moment. I'm using SSH uh, to connect to that repository and I've configured it to ask for passwords every time I use the SSH key. Okay, now the cloning is completed. There were some objects there that were downloaded. Uh, let's see what there is. Okay, it's still an empty repository, which is what it should be. On the background there you can actually see that repository in a web browser window. We'll switch to that every now and then. Let's uh, create a piece of code. This is just a very basic rudimentary piece of code. This is just to show how the version control works. There. Let's save and exit. Now you can see there's the class. Let's add that file to be in the set of files the version control keeps track of. Git add my class. Okay, that's now set up to be uploaded as a part of the next commit. So let's do that. Commit next. Git commit and with each commit you need to create a commit message my class and this message is just to give an idea what was done during this stretch of work that this commit contains okay one class was added and now that addition was committed to the version control system now at this point the version control is kept up to date only locally on this machine so in order to be able to share be able to do backups we are using the bitbucket centralized repository so let's push that one git push now again we are using the ssh connection so we need to input our password you can also create a key pair without using a password, but of course that's a little less secure. Now we see that here total written objects have been done and apparently everything was successful. Now let's see that here in the version control system page. Now we see that the class we created is now visible to us via the web interface, which means that it's uploaded into the remote repository without any problems. And we can view the source here and check the commit's history. Here you can see that, okay, this is the most previous commit, but there seems to be some history because this is old existing demonstration repository. That's how you do initial changes to a repository. I should mention that you should each time before you push do pull 
that is you kind of synchronize if somebody else has uh, changed the remote repository then you can merge your own changes to those uh, remote changes that others have done and then upload yours without any problems let's change something let's say add method okay there we go now we can check the difference between the files on the remote repository and files on our local and as we can see from these plus signs here this uh, other version of the file has these lines of code extra so it shouldn't be a problem we can add those changes to the existing code without any major difficulties okay and now let's refresh the page and see that okay these new additions are now pushed sometimes if you are working uh, with other people you might want to uh, create your own little sandbox where you can try stuff out and develop without it bothering others while you are doing something else and that's called branching git branch and let's give that branch a name working progress or something descriptive okay now we have created a branch let's switch to that switch to branch wrp now let's do some more edits okay now just as before let's add that file and commit Now with uh, we changing the branch, we should tell that also the, the remote repository. Let's tell push set up stream origin and now the branch name. And let's see how that worked. Here we see that this is now branched out. If we check the master source, no nagging methods but if we check the same file in the work in progress branch there's our nag 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 method now let's go back to our master branch and let's try to merge our work in progress let's say we've finished doing what we were set to do and now we want to get that piece of work back to everything else so git check out master switch to branch master and now we merge that work in progress and done. Now if we check the commits and branches, all branches, we should see that there's that work in progress. Commits, now that nagging method seems to be back in the main branch. So let's see if we can now see it in the master version of that. Yep, there we go. In case you would have some conflicts, you can use the git diff to see what problems there are. And usually when you try to do the merge command, it would say that, okay, now listen here, these lines and these lines, they both try to occupy the same space, what you want to do. And then you can go into the file, edit it so that it works the best way and then just continue. One other thing you need to do on this course is uh, to tag your commits and let's see now you can always tag the latest commit we just git tag let's give it a name nag that's now tagged again locally uh, but if we use the tags switch to push command it will just push the tags to the remote repository and now this just highlights it so that we can basically search for versions or something some specific commit with easy to remember name instead of a commit hash number that is kind of not user friendly way if we forget to do that tagging after we have committed no problem we can use this code here to just back tag so to speak any commit we want and let's tag this first one 
git tag let's call it re-init and then just give that commit code which we want to apply this tag to and again git push tags and that should now appear there yes that's about it i leave a couple of links under the video in the description for reference cards that will help you remember these basic commands if you happen to forget them it's okay if you start using them regularly you will soon remember the basic commands that's it if you have any questions please contact me and we'll get back to those okay thanks bye